What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another Madden 15 Ultimate Team video. And today, guys, we're going to be throwing it back a little bit to Madden 25 in a series that I did that kind of helped kind of blow up my channel, I guess you could say, and that was the budget series. So what we did in Madden 25 in the beginning of my channel, which was probably about February, uh, we actually started taking a look at some of the players who I thought were very underpriced and comparing them to some of the players that I thought were very overpriced. And, and the reason that we do that is because there are a lot of people out there who think that you absolutely have to spend a ton of coins, put in money into the game, do all these different things to have a good team in Madden Ultimate Team. And the reality is, is that that's not very true. The thing is, is that you have to make sure that you fill your roster with players who, first of all, have good attributes, and secondly, who fit your individual playing style. So I think that one of the things that people overlook are that there are a lot of these players who have, you know, like an 82 overall rating or things like that, and they're actually very, very good. The, the, the actual attributes on the cards are very, are very, very good. Uh, a lot of times comparable, possibly even better than some of the much more expensive cards that are in the game. So what we're going to be doing today is taking a direct comparison of, like I said, some of the cheaper cards and comparing them to some of the more expensive cards. Now, obviously, we saw in uh, in Madden 25 when I did this series that some of the prices of these cards started to go up after I put out the video. Um, I would love to say that I had a bigger part to do with that than I did, but I think that what ends up happening is a lot of people just go out there and price fix them. Um, so, you know, if if you have a chance, go out there and try and get these cards as soon as possible because I think that the prices on them will go up a little bit after these videos come out. But again, they will do just like they did in Madden 25. They will eventually stabilize. They'll become, you know, around right around this price, if not getting a little bit lower over time just because more cards come out and the average price of those cards that are a little bit older then goes down typically. So with that being said, let's start off and let's take a look at our first comparison of cards. And the positions that we're gonna be looking at today are the left tackle and the right tackle positions. And the reason that we're gonna be looking at those specifically is because I actually did this, like I said, for Madden 25, and I did the entire offensive line in one video and it was like a 25 minute video. So I'm gonna try and keep it a little bit shorter today uh, just to make sure that you guys get all the information that you need. And we'll end up doing the other positions over the next couple of weeks here. Um, but like I said, let's start off with left tackle and right tackle. So the very first one that we wanna take a look at today is uh, left tackle. And what we're gonna be looking at is the Jared Veldier. Uh, left tackle and that's 82 overall and we're going to compare it to Joe Staley who is 87 overall. So the things that you're looking at here for attributes, strength, impact block, run block strength, run block footwork, pass block strength, pass block footwork, and then acceleration and awareness. And obviously when you're looking at these two things, the comparisons, if, they, if it's a green attribute for that card, that one is actually better than the other one. And uh, if it's red, it's not as good. If it's yellow, they're the same. So th hopefully that makes sense to you guys. But these are kind of set up in a way that, uh, in, in terms of the things that I think are most important. Now you can obviously flip pass block and run block for the tackle positions. It, it really depends on your style of the offense, of course. Um, I think for a lot of people, pass block is going to be more important, so I'll try and focus on that. Acceleration and awareness are things that people always want me to put in there uh, for offensive line, so I do include those, but personally, I don't really look at them very much when I'm comparing two, uh, two items or cards. So with that being said, let's compare these directly. So first thing that we've got here, strength. Now, Jared Veldier, I think is a card that, uh, like I said, it's very underrated because if you look at the strength, 94 strength, he is significantly better than Joe Staley. And strength is definitely one of the most valuable things that you can have for an offensive line. It's definitely a, a thing that kind of goes into every single thing that an offensive lineman does. When he's running down the field and he's trying to get those impact blocks, strength matters. When he's going up against a pass rusher or he's going up against a, a run stuffer, it still matters. Strength is very, very important. It kind of goes into the little algorithm that the game does and each little interaction that you have between your offensive lineman and the opposing defensive lineman. So that's why, like I said, I put it very, very close to the top. I think it's hugely important. Now, impact block. 
Jared Valdir definitely falls behind on this one. Joe Staley is an absolute beast, and that's why this card is a 50,000 coin card. Uh, it's definitely uh, one of the best left tackles in this entire game. It's very good at everything for the most part. Uh, the only real area that I see that Joe Staley is not very good in is that he does have a pretty low pass block strength. And for whatever reason, I, I find that to be a little bit surprising. I don't under, really understand why he would have such a low pass block strength, and then you compare him to Veldir, and it's just not really much of a competition. Uh, so, I mean, he's nine better than Staley, so that's pretty significant. Now, like I said, Veldir at 3,500 coins, it, we're not saying necessarily that he's better than Joe Staley, but what we're really looking to do here is get a couple of cards that are going to be pretty good and ones that you can put into your lineup that are at least somewhat comparable to even the more expensive cards. So that's why, like I said, it's not it's not the same overall. It's not as good of a card overall, but in some of the areas, like I said, pass block strength, significantly better. Strength overall, significantly better. Um, but his pass block footwork is a little bit worse. So actually, as, as a pure pass blocker, Jared, Jared Veldier, you might be able to make an argument is actually better than Joe Staley. And that, I think, is surprising to a lot of people. So... Hopefully that helps you guys a little bit with the left tackle position right off the bat. Um, like I said, Staley, better overall, but significantly more expensive. I mean, we're talking 20 times, 15 times more expensive depending on the day. So, uh, you know, definitely uh, something to think about. If you've got the coins and you can spend them, go ahead and buy Joe Staley. He's definitely a monster. But if you're looking to ball on a budget like a lot of us are right now in the, in the early stages of Mutt, uh, Jared Veldier, I think, is definitely a good option for you. So let's move on to our second comparison. And in this comparison, we're taking a look at, I think possibly the best left tackle in this entire game, and that is Joe Thomas. And we're comparing him to Andrew Whitworth. And I think this one is gonna surprise a lot of people because Andrew Whitworth is an absolute beast at 80 overall. Seriously, he is an absolute beast. I don't understand how his overall could be as low as it is. I really, really don't. So let's compare them. Strength, they're the same at 92 overall. Impact block, Whitworth lags a little bit behind with six fewer than Joe Thomas, who has a 90. Now, in run block strength, Joe Thomas is a little bit better. He does have a one higher rating in that area, and the run block footwork, he is 11 better. So that is the biggest significant difference between these two cards, I think. But in the pass block strength and pass block footwork, this one really surprised me. Andrew Whitworth is straight up better. He's a straight up better pass protector than Joe Thomas who is known as probably the best left tackle in all of football, and I think most people would call him the best left tackle in this game at this point. So I think that's going to surprise a lot of people. Like I said, Whitworth, a better pass protector. His acceleration significantly lower, 15 lower. But, you know, that's only really that important if you're considering, you know, that if he were to pancake the defensive lineman that he's in front of and then get down the field to try and hit a safety or a corner or a linebacker, that's really the only time that you're going to see acceleration really be that important or of course on, on uh, things like screen passes. So definitely, like I said, in my opinion, not that important of an attribute. Awareness, they're both the same at a 90 overall uh, for the awareness attribute. But the big difference between these two cards, 3,000 coins for Andrew Whitworth, 125,000 coins on average for Joe Thomas. And again, guys, if you're not familiar, what I do is kind of average out all of the different consoles. So you might see it more expensive on like PlayStation 3 than you do on Xbox One. But this is kind of an average. So hopefully uh, you guys can go you know, onto either the EA Sports website or onto Mutthead and compare what the actual price for your individual console is. I'm Like I said, I'm just trying to get an average of these if I can. So like I said, 125,000 for Joe Thomas, 3,000 for Andrew Whitworth. And I honestly think that you could make a legitimate argument that Andrew Whitworth is better for a lot of people than Joe Thomas is because he's got the better pass block stats and because he has the same strength, the same awareness. But of course, the main thing, that price difference, I mean, 40 times more expensive for Joe Thomas than Andrew Whitworth is just crazy. I really don't think you could even make an argument that Joe Thomas is worth 40 times as much as Andrew Whitworth. It's absolutely absurd as far as I'm concerned. Andrew Whitworth, definitely one of the best budget cards that you are going to find in this entire game, at least at this point in the game, uh, which again, guys, we're making this video on September 25th. So three months from now, please don't comment on this video and ask me why Andrew Whitworth, I, I think is the best card or you know why Joe Thomas sucks or you know things like that. So with that being said, let's move on to right tackle. 
So up first at right tackle, on the left hand side you're seeing David Stewart, who is 86 overall as a right tackle. What's funny about this card is that he is actually a free agent. Unsigned in the NFL, but 86 overall. Alright Madden, alright Madden. <laughs> it's just, it just cracks me up sometimes to see just how completely ridiculous the, uh, the overall numbers are for some of these players who, like I said, don't even have a job in the NFL right now. But we're going to be comparing him to Anthony Davis, who is the right tackle for the San Francisco 49ers, an elite card. Now, the difference between these cards in price is David Stewart's at 6,500, Anthony Davis at 60,000. So almost 10 times as expensive for Anthony Davis than David Stewart. And guys, right now, I'm going to make a case for you that I believe David Stewart is a better overall player in this game than Anthony Davis for one tenth the price. So let's look at the attributes. Starting off strength, we've got David Stewart having a plus two advantage over Anthony Davis. Impact block, he has a plus four advantage. Now where Anthony Davis does make his money is as a run blocker in this game. He does have the 94 run block strength and the 82 run block footwork, which by the way, 82 run block footwork, not spectacular, but it is significantly better than David Stewart who has a 74 run block footwork. He is not a good run blocker. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. Uh, he's not going to be your lead guy in the blocking game for running the football. But he is okay as far as run block strength at 88. It's not spectacular. But when you compare it, when you add on the fact that it does have a 93 strength to begin with, it makes things a little bit more palatable. But where this guy is an absolute monster is as a pass blocker. 98 pass block strength, 93 pass block footwork, and you compare that to Anthony Davis, it is not even remotely close. It's really not even remotely close at all. Anthony Davis is awful as a pass protector in this game, which blew my mind when I saw it. He has 87 pass block strength and 77 pass block footwork. 77! He is going to get abused by guys like Cameron Wake or some of these guys who have great finesse moves. It is not even going to be a competition. Anthony Davis is going to get blown out. Meanwhile, David Stewart's going to be able to compete with those guys. And again, one-tenth the price. The other thing too is David Stewart does have better awareness, which again, I thought was kind of surprising at 92 awareness versus Anthony Davis's 81 awareness. Significant advantage there. Now, Anthony Davis does have a 77 Excel versus a 67 Excel for David Stewart. Neither of them are great, but David Stewart's 67 is pretty damn low. Overall, though, like I said, I believe David Stewart in this game is a better overall right tackle, and you can get him for one-tenth the price of Anthony Davis. I think it's one of the best bargains that you're going to find in this entire game. Uh, if you don't have the coins for him right now, go play some solo challenges and pick this guy up. Now, if you're looking for a tackle who can help you in the meantime before you get to that 6500 that you need to get David Stewart. I'm going to tell you about another guy who is currently rostered by the Tennessee Titans and that is Taylor Luan and he is going to be up against Sebastian Vollmer of the New England Patriots in this comparison. Now Sebastian Vollmer 32,000 coins pretty high price for a right tackle but he is 87 overall so that's pretty nice. Now, when you compare him to Taylor Luan, who is just a 79 overall card, but he's only 1,200 coins. So I love the 1,200 coins because that's the kind of card that you could get just by quick selling some things. So that's awesome. But let's take a look at these comparisons here because I think, you're, again, you're going to be pretty surprised by some of these things that we've got here. So first of all, strength. It's 91 for Taylor Luan, 93 for Sebastian Vollmer. Again, you can't really say Sebastian Vollmer isn't better. He is, I think, overall better than Taylor Lewan, but we're looking at the price difference between these cards, guys. The price difference is where the, the major thing that we want to pay attention to is. So Sebastian Vollmer, plus two on strength. The impact block, Taylor Lewan actually does have him by one. Then you go down to the run block strength and run block footwork. And we're gonna you're gonna notice here that in terms of the strength, it's kind of across the board. The actual strength numbers, Taylor Lewan not as good as Sebastian Vollmer. He's a little bit worse in run block strength. Uh, he's six worse uh, in run block strength, but he it does have a one advantage in run block footwork. And then in strength at the pass block, he's nine worse, but he has a six better pass block footwork. So you're kind of given a little bit to take a little bit. 
Um, again, Sebastian Vollmer definitely better overall, and especially when you consider the fact that he does have way better awareness. So, I mean, that is something that, it, although I think awareness is overrated, and I think it's something that's used by Madden to inflate certain players' overall ratings, um, it is still somewhat important for doing things like picking up blitzes or, um, you know, helping out in the screen game and figuring out which guy to go after uh, when they're going down the field to pick up locks. All that kind of stuff does take into, ha does have to get taken into consideration, I should say. Um, but then you look at the acceleration. Taylor Lewan has 88 acceleration. That's one of the fastest right tackles that you're going to see in this entire game all year. I mean, that's really, really quick getting off the ball. Um, he's going to do a great job for you. Like I said, I don't really look too much into acceleration, but, you know, if you're somebody that does, this is the kind of card for you. I, I really think it's a solid card overall. Um, and especially, like I said, for 1,200 coins, it just doesn't get much better than that, guys. It really doesn't. This card is absolutely beastly for 1,200 coins. Um, I don't know how the hell it's this low overall. It, it really does have good attributes across the board. So, Taylor Lewan, definitely one of the best budget cards in this entire game. If you pair him with any of these other guys, I think you're going to be very, very happy uh, until, you know, some of these other cards start to come down in price. It, there's really not much of an advantage to paying 50,000, 70,000, 30,000 coins for an offensive lineman when you can get a guy that has kind of similar attributes and arguably better attributes in some cases for one-tenth the price, one-twentieth the price, and, and in one of the cases, like I said, one-fortieth of the price. So guys, I hope you learned something from today's video. If you did, make sure you press that like button below. It's it's very, very important for me uh, to get those likes on my videos because it's really how we grow this channel. It's how we can get some of this great information out to other people, and it lets me know that you guys are excited about these videos. So thank you again for all your support. I do appreciate it. Sorry we haven't done much more Madden content. The new base Maybe is just taking up a lot of time, um, but trust me guys, we are still going to be doing plenty of Madden content over the next couple of weeks, months, and over the entire year here that Madden 15 is out. So let me know in the comment section below what position you guys want to see next. I'm thinking that I'll probably do the rest of the offensive line, so the guards in the center in my next video, but after that, what do you guys want to see? Do you want to see defensive line, cornerbacks, wide receivers, uh, you know, running back. What, what do you guys want to see next? Let me know in the comment section below and I will try to make that happen for you. If you have any questions too, make sure you leave those below. I will try to answer them as always. Uh, that's one of the things I t take great pride in is responding to as many of the questions as I possibly can that you guys leave for me. So thank you again, like I said, for all the support. I do appreciate it.